Welcome back to our Splunk series and today is the module 4 where we are going to create and view alerts. So uh, creating alerts in Splunk is extremely important skill for the SAC analyst. It allows us to passively monitor all sorts of security events and to respond quickly to them. So let's begin with creating an off failed alert. So noticing skate, uh, scattered bars of attempted SSH logins, we have been tasked to create an alert that monitors SSH login failures and notifies us of an abund abundance of such events. So, uh, we will go and select the source type off and look for the failed logins. So in the search bar, we'll look for the source type. And we'll look for failed login. For failed, uh, for any events that contain word failed ins inside. So, understanding alerts options. So based on the search, we can create an alert. So before you create an alert, you need to conduct the search and based on that a search result, you will create an alert. So before creating the alert, it's important to understand the options we are presented with. So the options will be here when we'll create an alert and we'll have different options like First will be to give it a title and we can put a description for this. We can specify the permission if you want to share this um, alert with ours, like using the shared app where we just keep it private for ourselves. And uh, alert type we can schedule to be generated on the certain time frame where we can have the alerts in real time. And we can specify when to run this um, alerts as well, like to specify when we, ha we can be not notified. So alert type scheduled alerts run at the specific interval and real time alerts monitor events in real time. And it's possible to use the cron syntax to specify the schedule of the al of this uh, alerts when we want them to generate. So using cron schedule allows us to customize the time range of the search. And um, it's gonna be here like we can choose the run on cron type and then we can give it like a specific uh, time frame when we want and how often we want to run this specific alert. So um, expires, for example, when we want to expire this alert, it says specifies how long an alert event will be available on the triggered alerts dashboard. Then we have uh, trigger once will take a trigger action uh, once for all events once the trigger condition is met. So trigger for each result will take a trigger action for each event separately. So basically like we, we can specify the conditions for those triggers. Like how many results we want to, uh, to see based on how many hosts or how many sources and or you can customize the trigger conditions. Also you can specify like um, how many alerts you, you want it to to have before it, it triggered this alert. So you can trigger it once or for each result and you can have a throttle where you specify like suppressing those triggering alerts so you don't get like alerts non-stop but you get like an alert notifying of all these events at a certain time frame and you can give it the trigger actions or you can add the trigger alert and uh, you'll be able to choose like by severity low high and critical so you will uh, be prompted with alerts and you will know based on the criticality of the severity of this um, alert which one to take action first so whenever you create an alert it will be in here and you'll be able to see your alerts. We don't have anyone, uh, none of them here, so we don't have 
any alerts to view but once we, we create them we'll be able to come here to this dashboard and see these alerts so let's go back to our query so which permission option should you choose if you want to be the only one to be able to view this alert so like we did it in here it's in alerts and we can have the permission of private to keep it only for us and what alert type should you choose for the alert to run with a certain interval so we have scheduled what is the cron schedule expression for running the alert every two minutes so for the cron like they have um, like information here you can read how it works like you have a specific minute to set up a specific hour a specific day of the month a specific month and a specific day of the week so you can create this customized time frames where you want this alerts to uh, generate on the specific time frame and in our case it asks us to uh, schedule the expression of the run uh, for running the alerts every two minutes so for every two minutes we have the slash two and make sure you give the space between those uh, stars and there will be our um, expression for running the alert every two minutes in um, wrong syntax so if you go back to our um, like alert we can go in here choose cron and specify here the alert to be uh, to run every two minutes all right so creating the alert so finally we can create an alert and here is the condition they give us uh, the alert to, to be scheduled to run every two minutes and the number of failed to collect the numbers of failed SSH logins that are greater than 10. So to have, if we have more than 10 uh, failed SSH logins, to be to be prompted with an alert in our message uh, bar where we get our alerts. And uh, also it says to suppress the alert notification for five minutes. So we don't have, we don't get like every second, every two minutes like based on our uh, structure we are going to create every two minutes to generate those uh, to, to run for those alerts so um, based on this we'll need to make sure that we give it a five minutes time frame so we are getting those alerts every five minutes not every time that those alerts are um, generated so in this case of lots of failed SSH login attempts the throttling will somewhat lower the number of incoming alert events and here is that um, alert frame that we need to set up so ssh failed the name of the title private alert on the schedule to run on the cron every two minutes and the time range to be uh, relative and they want us uh, to be every two minutes ago so select two minutes and for two minutes ago apply and then for expiring um, it doesn't say anything so we'll leave by default and we need to set up the throttle okay so we need to set up the the number of results will be greater than 10 if, um, in order to generate the alert otherwise if it's lower do not generate the alert and then we select the throttle and we want it to suppress for five minutes and we want to add an action trigger to add the triggered alert and we'll give the severity of um, low I think it was here yep <clears throat> so severity of low on save and we have our alert created and if you want to see our alert we can go in here and see our search reports and alerts and here is our alert created and it says enabled and if we want to configure or edit we can come here and edit the alert 
right? So now creating a real time alert. So the company's new website is up and running, but seems to be acting up at times. It looks like programming errors have crept their weight into the code and the customers have been met with internal servers error. So such issues should uh, they such issues should they arise should be found and dealt with as quickly as possible. Thus, it is up to you to be proactive and to use Splunk to implement a real-time alert, which will catch any such issues. So now we are going to create um, a search term. We are going to look by the search term where we are looking for the HTTP 500 errors. So this is the server error. And uh, based on these conditions and status, we are going to create a real-time alert. So let's go back to our um, search bar and we look for the source type access combined and uh, the status 500 so now we have this uh, query and based on this we can go and create an alert and uh, they want us to create an alert the real-time alert in private and the trigger alert per result so our alert should be HTTP 500 private real-time per result and they didn't say anything about the throttle so we'll just add action to be triggered and we want to give it a criticality of high the severity of high and save. So we now have, if we go back to our search reports and uh, alerts, we have two alerts now. So configure field based throttling. Currently, if um, many users get a 500 internal server error from the same web page, they will be bombarded with alerts. Ideally, you would want to only get one alert per broken web page. That way, you won't get too many unnecessary notifications. And to do this, uh, we'll once again implement throttling, but we'll do so based on a certain field. And this means that we'll only get an alert message if that field is unique, and duplicates will be throttled for a chosen time period. So. Like we are going to create an alert throttling based on a specific uh, field and that field should be unique otherwise um, we'll get like a lot of um, similar alerts. So adding a field now we can go and um, find our alert it's right here and it says to go and choose advanced edits and here we'll have more fields and uh, they want us to give it an URA path field inside the display events fields. So we'll go and look for display events fields. And we have here already four fields inside host source source type. So that's the default one, um, the selected default. And now we want just to add one more, which is uh, URA path. And we'll save. Let me make sure I put the comma in here. So save this one. And now, whenever we'll uh, get alerts, it will be with unique URI alerts. So we'll lower this amount of alerts that are generated. So add the URI path in the selected field of HTTP 500. And we've add this, add you. Okay, I haven't add the URI in the selected fields. So um, I need to go and configure the URI in the field. I mean, I've add this one in here. 
advanced edits. I mean, I've done this just right now. I don't know why it doesn't populate. So, what's the name? Display events. basically that's how you do you go and insert this uh, field uh, to be added to your layer next we are going to go and um, use this throttling which will suppress the results for 10 minutes based on the URI path field now we can go uh, oh, okay sorry I've been probably editing this field <laughs> I'm not sure Display. Yeah, I put it in the wrong. Put it in the wrong alert. All right, so HTTP alert. We need to go and edit this one, and we need to configure the throttling based on the source field value to be URI path, and do not trigger for ten minutes. And now we have our alert created based on what they asked us to do. All right, so now we can view the triggered alerts. And now that you have successfully created a few useful alerts, it's time to take a look at the results and navigate to active activity triggered alerts. I'm like I'm going here, triggered alerts. And we can see like all these alerts that have been triggered. You can see those highs and just one low. So if you click on view results, we'll get the details about this alert. And we can see like here we got this event and we got uh, the source type, the source, the host. And uh, it asks us to provide what is the IP address of the user who is triggering the, U the 500 internal server error. So the IP address is going to be this one, the IPv6 address. Uh, what is the URI path of the API endpoint which returns a 500 internal server error? So the, um, that's going to be our URL. You can see the server port 3000 login. This is the URI path of the API endpoint. So that's how we creating an alerts and how we can specify the time when we can generate, how we can set up the throttling and how we can view and um, prioritize those alerts. Like you can see, you can create an alert and give it a um, severity and based on the severity, you will come and take action. Like if it's the top, you know, the critical, that's your main focus there. You solve the, based on the severity, taking action on them. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.